All right, g'day, hi, and welcome. Okay, my last video was talking about, uh, that's right. When I walk, you move. All right, anyway, so now that I'm done threatening the tree. Um, okay, so in my last, uh, I was talking about like, basically you sweat, you die, you know, Les Stroud, I'm not the first guy to, this is like, and he's not even the first guy to realize that. I mean, that's like, ancient knowledge you know what I mean but some people uh, you got to say it out loud for some people if they've never you know especially if they're new to bushcraft and going outside and stuff like that, especially if they're city people there's a lot of things that you know can overwhelm you and a lot of things that you don't consider because you have you don't have the experience um, one of the things is breathing how do you breathe when you're out in the outdoors well the way you normally breathe idiot but there's something else you need to know like today very low humidity it's uh, nice and mild the sun's out perfect day so if you were one of those like uh mountain climber people uh you know hiker people you like to you know get the heart rate up and stuff like that runners joggers uh these people uh something that happens to them quite more often particularly not just in the winter but just at a i'd say like say from plus seven down where you start to get that extreme, uh, the uh, the danger zone for an airplane, for for ice, is the same danger zone for pneumonia. If you ask me, if you're on an airplane, okay, and it's like say plus ten out, okay, you're fine. You go up, but at a certain speed, the air, if it's really damp and moist, and it cools down, it'll form ice on your wing, even even in the pluses because of the speed of the airplane. You know, just that air racing over top of the wing and this that's why a lot of airplanes if it's like minus 15 or warmer in the winter and it's really and the humidity at a certain level i can't remember the exact level uh th they will ground the airplane usually not commercial airplanes because they got the icers and all that stuff and then they get up high where there's no humidity anyway even if it's cold cold is fine as long as there's no humidity right so if you're jogging and you're running or getting just getting your heart rate up and you have a sensitive uh, system that's not used to being outside or in uh, thin air high up, like thick mountains and stuff like that. If you've ever climbed a few mountains, I've never climbed like mega mountains, like, you know, K2 or Everest or anything like that. But I did some rock face climbing and, you know, go up a few thousand feet or whatever. You will notice a difference in the air. I'm at about uh, 750 above sea level now. Top, top hill here is just about 1150 above sea level. And on a day like today, I would notice from the bottom to the top because it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a pretty steep climb, right? So I would definitely be breathing harder and stuff like that. And then what you'll probably find is you start to, I know it's going to sound gross, but you're going to start to snot up. That's all the phlegm and everything coming out of your lungs and everything like that. But then all that mucus and phlegm and all that, I know it sounds gross, starts to build up. And then you know how you catch pneumonia, you can go research it, stuff like that. And then you, you end up getting water in your lungs that you can't expel and once that happens uh you start to get pneumonia once you get pneumonia once apparently it's easier to get it every other time there's something there is that a rabbit watch for something darting out in a second now mind you i was stopped by a wild chicken here the other day Ugh, i found my a hole okay no it's something else i thought there was a rabbit there i was like i'll fight him Come at me, bro. Come at me. Freaking rabbit. You don't think I'll take him? I'll take him. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> I want that wild chicken to come out at me, though. He, he wouldn't, though. He followed me. He went from there all the way up to the corner. I was like, you little bugger. And uh, I was like, fight me. Yeah. If I get it, if I, <laughs> you know, like wild chicken season is over right now. But if, if, it, if I get the shot, you know. You know, that's a, yeah, I, I want to bring back my boomerang and get a wild chicken with it. But anyway, getting back to the pneumonia and stuff like that. So pneumonia is a very serious thing. People used to die from it, like in the 1800s, early 1900s. It was very common to have children and elderly die of pneumonia. It's still common, but not as common, right? I mean, you know, better housing. I mean, a lot of it was, was poor heating and stuff like that. People... You know, they put enough blankets on and stuff like that, but they would condensate. You know, they used to put these awnings over the bed. 
and they would condensate and uh, you know basically your breath would create so much moisture and start raining down and you you're basically breathing liquid you know you're, you're breathing water the humidity you get so much and then you end up with pneumonia and if you're not used to hiking and stuff like that and you're really breathing hard this is why you see like a lot of joggers and runners they end up with pneumonia because they're breathing so hard it uh the air coming in gets so cold is so much cooler it creates so much moisture you get a build up in your lungs you get pneumonia so this is why you have to move at a pace in the bush that doesn't allow you to stress your system as much these are things i don't really hear the bushcraft guys talking about as much uh i'm not a medic i'm not that it's just it's just stuff i know you can research it a bit more and get better more expert advice on that because but it is something that is true right so my take is this is why i don't run through the bush i uh, unless <laughs> unless i'm going after food um or there's something or something sees me as a meal it's you know the kill or be killed thing you know what i mean that's the only time i run in the bush uh you know uh, like i say you could be dumb as a bag of hammers but sometimes a flash of brilliance could save your life as long you know as long as you're fast enough to get like if, if i see a bear this time of year which i just sit there oh wow what's he doing up but i know he'd be groggy enough that i could probably go over and kick him in the face and you do nothing i wouldn't try that theory but whatever if i seen a, a pack of wolves Chances are, as soon as they see me, they'd, they'd take off. If they weren't, I'd be up a tree. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not scared of wolves. If I see a cougar, well, I'm not running. No, no point in, uh, uh, you know, uh, cl trying to climb a tree. I'll just keep him in front of me and take him out with the tomahawk. You know, at least if he kills me, I'll just make sure he doesn't enjoy the meal. So I'll get him in the side, you know, let him bleed out. So kill the both of us, you know. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just kind of a bit of a prick that way. <laughs> you know, it's like, you want to kill me, that's fine, but you're not going to enjoy the meal. I ain't going to be freaking the cougar poop, you know what I mean? And then last, if I see a moose first, I shit my pants, then the, I will run 500 miles an hour up the top of that tree because that animal I do fear. Why? Because they, moose kill more people than just about, you know, grizzlies kill a few people, cougars kill probably, out of the predators, cougars I think kill the most, there's not that many cougars around here, the odd one passes through. Uh, bears kill, like I say, a few people, but moose is like people, oh look, it's a cute moose, and then they walk up to it, try to hug it, and they get kicked in the head, <laughs> and stompled to death. <laughs> it's kind of funny when you think about it, why, because stupid, stupidity always hurts, right? Uh, but you can use that as your example, so you see a moose, just make sure you make yourself kind of not a, a, an inconvenience to them because especially if it's a bull moose now if it's a, an old lady with a calf uh you know uh yeah that's dangerous uh, like mama bear is bad with cubs but uh uh, uh you know a, a cow moose with a calf that's like th those who those who's have your name on it and she will dart across out of nowhere at like speeds you can't even imagine you know <laughs> like yeah like you're gonna be jumping into trees or like i say you're gonna whatever but other than those situations calm nice stroll through the bush you know go at the pace that's going to keep you your pulse at a a reasonable now some days especially when it's like the 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 snow is sinking and stuff like that it's a lot easier in the summer to do this but in, in, in when the snow's sinking and stuff like that it, it tires you because it's always that shot of uh, uh, you know what i mean that really tires you it tires out your legs tires out everything even works to your gopro into an oddball position as you see so just be mindful of your breathing that you're not breathing to the point where you're like <gasps> like that or whatever as soon as you're into that you're going to get a condensation that will build up liquid in your lungs almost guaranteed for most people you might get away with it a few times but again just look at like athlete athletic runners running in the winter time they do a whole preparation so that they don't end up um whatever and there's a certain amount of cold too that your lungs can take before you damage your lungs keep that in mind as well so anyway i thought i'd cover that because that's where you got to start when you're talking bushcraft you got to start with the basics so there we go